Hi everyone, I'm Shanti back with another episode of Shanti Finance. Today I am going to try out my Derwent in Inktense blocks for the first time and I'll be doing a mini product review of this one. Here's how the box looks like. Um, I bought a 12 piece set. Uh, whenever I try a new medium, I always buy the smallest set available, which uh, kind of is uh, counterproductive uh, according to a lot of artists because you would like to have more colors and not less. But what I personally think is that if you buy a smaller set and then go move on to the larger sets, then that gives you an idea of how um, how many colors you would eventually need whether you can mix the colors and get some new colors or whether you need more colors to start with so that's why i buy uh, the smaller set on top of the box they are showing you the different colors that are in the box which is kind of important because nowhere else it is mentioned what exact colors are there inside the box like for example this is brown and this is black however if you look at it from where i am looking at it both of them look very much the same color um, now I got it for about ten ninety seven or something on Amazon, which was a very low price on that particular day. Only the next day the price went up, and uh, that was only for this twelve piece block. The other ones were really more, ex much more expensive. Uh, so I got a deal. But the downside is that if you see that these boxes, the colors are kind of uh, a little bit dirty, which I'm sure is not Durbin's fault. It's kind of I think one of the uh, ones. Uh, that was in stock for a very long time and thus got uh, pushed. So, uh, but I don't think that will affect my art in any way. Now, you have to rip off this cover uh, first to get this blocks. Now, uh, do understand that these blocks are kind of fragile. They break into small pieces, but that is not a big concern because this is not supposed to be used as a dry medium. This is more likely will be used as a wet medium. So whether it is uh, like the full stick or smaller sticks, it is not a big problem because rarely would you be holding it and using it like, like you use pastels. This is not a pastel set. It is soluble ink. So um, it kind of is something in between watercolors and uh, acrylics it has some properties that makes it look like uh, watercolor but i think it is more like acrylics than watercolor so technically it is ink so that's what the box is all about and let's get on to the art process but before that uh, these little wells that you see over here that is where you can uh, dilute the colors use it singly or mix colors but if you want to use a separate palette i would suggest that because eventually uh, these places will get dirty and you will have to get a, a new palette so that's something to consider Next, I've done a couple of different kind of swatches. Uh, these are the how these are the swatches that I've done initially with very little water on my brush, just uh, testing how intense the color would be. And uh, the only thing to note here is that the color dries a little bit darker than what it looks when it is uh, when you actually apply it with water. Um, and uh, the blending is pretty smooth uh, when you m use a lot of water it moves very nicely like watercolors or acrylic so that is a plus for me because uh, since my style is realistic I need everything to look smooth so that that is the one thing I always test out and now the next swatch that I have is uh, where I started with the bright pigment and then kept on adding a little bit of water to test out how light it goes and you can see that it pretty much goes as much light as you want it to go so you keep on adding water to get it blended now this is the third thing that I did is trying uh, blending two different colors uh, because say for example I use purple a lot and this 12 piece set does not have a purple so I tried mixing this red and this blue and got this nice little purple very easily so that's obviously another thing I was looking for. Now the last thing that I'd like, like to mention here is uh, 
show you rather here is that this is pretty permanent. This kind of looks like watercolor, but the main difference is that once it's dry, it's kind of not so much reactivated. Now it's not 100% dry yet, so a little bit came off, but it, it, it pretty much uh, cannot be reactivated too much. Uh, for example, now this one is completely dry, and if you see that I'm, even after adding a lot of water, it's not getting reactivated. So that's another thing to note. Now I'll go on and uh, to the actual artwork, and while um, I demonstrate the artwork, you I'll share what I like and what I do not like about this product. Before getting onto the pros and cons of Inktense blocks, I'd rather like to mention a couple of things about the artwork or this little landscape that I'm painting. First of all, when I review a product, when I test out a product for the first time, my goal is to test out the strengths um, and weaknesses of the product. So I'm not really 100% focused on the artwork, so I tend to choose a subject that is um, typically less, uh, rather I should say it's which is typically easier and not has does, doesn't have too much of details on it. Not that painting details is difficult as such. It's just that I want to focus more on the different aspects of the material itself than on the artwork. And uh, so I would rather typically do either a flower or a still life in this case I'm choosing a landscape and why this particular landscape as you all uh, must know that I recently moved from Columbus Indiana to North Carolina and Columbus uh, was a very small town but it was it had a lot of beautiful architecture and one of the um, architecture is the bridge that I am painting uh, today and I was just thinking about my old home and thought of being a little nostalgic and thought of painting this little piece. So that's all about the artwork itself. Let's now get on to the strengths and weaknesses of intense blocks. Let me first talk about the cons or the weaknesses because there are very few of those. First of all, the thing that I did not like about this particular set, this 12 piece set, is that they it does not have a white and ink tense being working more like ink and having more properties like acrylic. I thought adding white would have been a really good idea. It has a brown uh, and I can make lots of different kinds of brown by mixing red, yellow, orange, blue and all that. Uh, colors so if they have removed that dark brown and instead added a white I would have thought that this um, set would have been much better the 12 piece set that being said these uh, single the these uh, blocks are available in single pieces uh, which I'll come ba back to it a little bit later so it's not a big deal it's just this particular set I'm sure the 24 piece set has and any set that has more number of uh, pieces has uh, the white block in it. Um, the other thing that I really do not like about this product is that it is not light fast. So yes if you are a beginner and if you do not worry about light fastness or archivalness of art materials it's fine but this is not a very inexpensive art material it's not like buying alcohol cheap alcohol markers this is a little bit on the pricier side although i got a one for really cheap but this is typically very highly priced not very highly priced but reasonably on the higher side so if i'm going to invest on something um, and if i'm going to have an art material that produces such good results and pricey too, I would want it to be archival and light fast so that I can sell my originals. That being said, you may not be want to sell originals because it's not light fast, but you can always sell prints. So that's the major downside I see about the ink tents. Now on to the brighter side. Um, this uh, this is very very versatile kind of uh, painting medium it has 
it is some I have previously mentioned it is somewhere in between watercolors and acrylics so you can get the effects of watercolors while it behaves like acrylics as far as permanency is concerned so once dry because they are like dry ink so once you um, uh, allow the liquid portion to dry completely and it's all set then it's permanent and that is a part that works like acrylics which makes layering and all that so much easier in case of watercolors when you lay, put one layer on top of the other you have to be very careful and very subtle and add a little bit at a time and you cannot scrub with your paintbrush much because the bottom layers will come off or it will get blended in this case it does not happen because this is permanent you can cover up a, a completely dark area with white on top of it and re repaint on it so that's definitely a plus especially for people who are trying out the medium or painting in general um, at the very beginning the colors are extremely bright at the same time they can be diluted with a lot of, of water and to get very subtle tones and you can get a wide range of tones depending on how much water you apply just like watercolors the single colors are available so if you tend to use one block more than the others or one color more than the others and you run out of the colors before you run out of the other colors then you don't have to buy a whole set you can buy the individual blocks which is a big deal because not all colors you typically use a lot like say for example black i tend to use it much less than white in other mediums that i use so my white will run out probably be the first one to run out uh, in case of acrylics or oil paints and um, so in in this behaving like acrylics the white will run out faster like i said so i don't have to go and buy the whole set just to get one white i can actually get a lot of whites instead and individually uh, individual blocks are not that expensive um so it's affordable and all that so that's obviously another plus and although i got this very small 12 piece range if it had the white one then you could practically mix any color in the whole wide world because it has a very nice range of colors two different kinds of um reds um yellows orange colors browns and uh, greens blues all the basic colors that you might need so if you have all of those colors it's it's pretty easy to go on and mix the other colors and they mix very well and uh, use it uh, for a work to create all the different colors that you might need and uh, like i said uh, you can get very washed down look just like you get in watercolors using a lot of water and at the same time you can layer a lot just like acrylics and use it in the dark colors as well solid areas as well so i think uh, that that Kind of wraps up the qualities of this particular product and another thing i'd like to mention is that the reason i bought this particular uh, medium and i was interested in this medium is because i have heard and i've seen that it can be used on fabric and of late i am picking up back up on fabric painting i used to do a lot of that when i was much younger in my college days but then i I, for some unknown reason I, I did not do a lot of that but recently I picked that up I'm painting t-shirts and uh, dresses and skirts and all that and I'm, I will definitely come up soon with videos on how to use ink tents for fabric painting so that there's a versatility and additional use of this particular medium that you might be interested in so with all that the final thing that i would suggest is that although this behaves more like watercolor or it, uh, people tend to think that it is more like watercolor because it's a water-based medium try to use it like the way you would use your acrylic paints go from dark to light or 
you can go either ways but you know uh, keep that in mind that it behaves or the end results are more like acrylic like it dries a little bit darker and all that good stuff so then try to use it more like you would use uh, approach your acrylics and that would give you i think a better handling or better grasp on this new medium so that was my mini review i hope that uh, that would allow you a better insight whether if you are kind of um, in double minds whether or not to invest in another art medium i know that's always a, a big decision Uh, because art materials are not inexpensive so i hope that would help and if you uh, want to learn about more art art uh, products as well as art tutorials in general do subscribe to my channel and here hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever i post a new video that is all for today thank you for watching